This is the second part of the assembly from a couple of weeks ago, in which we identified a range of issues around trauma, abuse and equality. We also looked at fight and flight and freeze response and how that is a physical response to external stimulus. This session is intended to build on our understanding of the physical effects of big and small traumas. Stress is normal. It can be used in a very functional way. However, being in a permanent state of stress will lead to mental and physical problems. We deal with daily tra small traumas in our own lives. We also have to find resilience and positive coping strategies when the big traumas happen. If you're constantly finding things stressful and feel overwhelmed and helpless, that might be a small t trauma as opposed to the significant big T traumas. But either way, it can lead to uh, serious stress. Stress is not good for the body at all. Short-term stress can make you feel worried, anxious, increase heart rate, breathing, uh, tummy can feel unsettled, skin can become sensitive. You might um, have experienced some other uh, tensions and problems as well. But over long term, these can develop into um, physical illnesses. So tension, headaches, migraine, mental health problems, serious heart, serious heart problems, trouble breathing, hyperventilation, panic attacks, skin and hair conditions, uh, increased risk of type 2 diabetes, fertility problems. So how do we overcome these problems? One of the first stages is to realise that we are all experiencing problems like this. And usually it's an event that happens and then we end up reliving that event far more than anyone else around us. For example, you might have an argument with your little brother or sister um, or a family member and they've moved on, but you're still furious from that argument. So we can call these the first arrow and second arrow of stress. The first arrow is where you've had a go at someone or someone's had a go at you and you're feeling hurt. And then the second arrow is where we choose to relive it. Recognising that we have a choice there is a really important first step. So let's look at this quick animation. You know when something bad happens, <gasps> then you blame yourself? <clears throat> That's two arrows. Let me explain. The first arrow represents a negative experience, like tripping and dropping your tray on the lunchroom floor. This pain caused by the first arrow happens to everyone throughout life. No one is perfect. However, if you react super negatively to the bad experience, becoming upset or angry, blaming or complaining, you set off the suffering of the second arrow. But the pain of the second arrow can be a choice. While you can't control your circumstances, you can choose how you will react and choose not to react in a way that continues the hurt from the first arrow. So the next time something stressful happens, remember not to shoot the second arrow. And instead, change to chill. Going beyond the small T, if we look at the big T, the big trauma that causes PTSD. So there's proven coping strategies for PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, these, this comes from prolonged traumas. Uh, Counselling does work for a lot of people. Uh, for some people, reliving a trauma isn't very helpful. Lifestyle changes, journaling, self-reflection, exercise, um, mindfulness, spending time with people. Uh, they all help heal uh, traumas. But we need to look at uh, how trauma actually physically manifests itself for us to really understand some of these uh, tricks that can help uh, get us back into our uh, calm self. So the sympathetic nervous system controls the fight or flight. You may remember this from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it, it's the one that gets you ready to lash out or run away. And if you can't do any of those, what happens is you freeze. Uh, what you really need to access is the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, and that is the rest and digest. It is the calm and content and happy place that we all want to be. The easiest hack to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, it's really simple. It doesn't even involve counting. All you have to do is inhale for a certain amount of time, hold for the same amount of time, and then exhale for slightly longer. So let's have a go. Uh, However you want to do it, eyes closed, eyes open. Uh, we expect your tutors to participate doing this as well. So take a deep breath in through the nose for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. And then a slow exhale for six seconds out of your nose. 
Let's do that one more time. Inhale, four. Hold for four. And exhale for six. When you breathe in, you activate the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, and that's why you see athletes take a couple of deep breaths in to get them ready to flight or fight. Uh, what we did there by breathing out for a longer, calmer uh, exhale through our nose, we access, access the parasympathetic nervous system. We accessed our rest and digest system. For our next happiness hack, we need to understand something. The body is a miraculous machine made up of 100 billion nerve cells. These cells allow information to flow backwards and forwards from the brain to the body and back again. Now, there's nerves everywhere, uh, but one of the most important nerves is the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve is, comes from the brain, and it is uh, two nerves that run through the body, and it connects to so many important parts of our body. What is the vagus nerve? Well, actually, its Latin name means vega to wander, and that's pretty accurate because it wanders to all of the major organs. Um, it's the longest cranial nerve, and it controls all involuntary processes. So speech, breathing, swallowing, heart rate, blood pressure, hearing, taste, circulation, digestion, and gut health. It also controls bladder movement and other things. A healthy vagus nerve will allow us to use our executive part of our brain. That's the important part of our brain for learning. It's uh, creative, it's responsible for uh, decision making. If it's not able to, then it will end up uh, accessing a more uh, primal part of our brain, uh, an amygdala, which is responsible for our fight or flight. Um, the vagus nerve is essential for leadership. If we're stressed, um, anxious, or have a poor lifestyle, then it inhibits the function of our vagus nerve. Uh, if you don't have um, those things, then our vagus nerve is not going to perform to the best of its ability. If that's the case, then our mind and body can become susceptible to disease. Disease like depression, anxiety, obesity, cardiovascular disorders, diabetes, chronic inflammation, kidney malfunction, and infertility, and Parkinson. So how do we tap into the executive brain, the front part of our brain that's responsible for all these wonderful things? How do we avoid living in survival mode, that amygdala place, that fight or flight? Well, it's breathing. A really simple hack, how to breathe. I know uh, we do it involuntarily, uh, I'm pretty certain we all do, but uh, there is a right and a wrong way. The right way is the way children do, the belly breath, where we inhale and our belly comes out, and we exhale, our belly comes in. The wrong way is when we're breathing in our chest, very anxious, it's very stressed. The other thing, this is a revelation, is that um, you shouldn't be a mouth breather. You should breathe in and out for your nose. By breathing in and out for your nose, you actually keep calm and you're able to activate parts of your body that make uh, the oxygenation even more efficient. Now, in PSHE, we've been doing lots of mindfulness over the last couple of years and we've been looking at breathing techniques. So you'll remember the box breathing technique. Um, which is four seconds in, hold for four seconds, four seconds out, uh, and then four seconds for um, hold, and doing four repetitions. That works really well to access the vagus nerve. What are the stresses in school for you? Well, actually, as a, as a teacher and a student, there's lots of stresses. There's tests and exams, being asked a question, speaking in front of other people, getting it wrong, being self-conscious. These can lead to a heightened stress and induce the fight or flight response. If we can't do either of the fight or the flight, then uh, it, it tends to escalate to a freeze. And this is where stage fright comes in. And we choke. So what's the solution? How can we hack our body systems? Yeah, you guessed it. The hack is breathing. This is a technique that we taught you as well. Uh, it's four, seven, eight breathing exercise. You're gonna breathe in for four, through your nose, hold for seven, and then Breathe out through your nose for eight. We're going to do four cycles. So let's have a go now.
key takeaway messages from this. Don't underestimate your breathing. Breathe properly. Try and do belly breaths. Breathe in for your nose and out for your nose. If you need to calm yourself down, breathe out longer than you breathed in. I hope you feel calm and ready for the day.